Hello, dear students, and welcome again to our English lessons. Today's lesson is from Unit 5, and it is about sports psychology. First, we'll start by presenting new vocabulary items, and then we'll have some practice questions and exercises, and after that, we'll have some set book questions. We'll have a short break now, and then we'll come back to you again. Welcome again to our today's lesson from Unit 5 sport psychology. Now we'll start by presenting new vocabulary items. First, let's look at this picture. As you can see, these are people running, but they are not people with uh, regular feet or with feet as usual as normal people. They are called disabled people. And disabled people hold sporting events every four years. These sporting events are called the Paralympics. So the word Paralympics is a noun and it is pronounced Paralympics. If you, the definition for this word is it is what? A competition. And it is a sports competition, but it is an international one. And it is only for people who have physical disabilities. We have an example here. We can say, for example, the Paralympics are held every four years immediately after the Olympics. That's why they are called Paralympics. They are parallel to the Olympics. Good. Now, we move to the next word, and it is the word able-bodied. It's an adjective, and the stress is on bodied, so we say able-bodied. Now, able-bodied people are people, as you can see the word, we have body and able. That is their body, there is nothing wrong with their body. These people are healthy, they have no illnesses, no bad condition, and they can do everything people can do. So they are able-bodied. And they are the opposite of disabled people. Right. Look here at this example. We have all able-bodied young men were forced to join the army. So the army needed people, or needed people, or soldiers, so they recruited able-bodied people because they cannot recruit disabled people. Nice. Now, let's move to the next item and let's look at this photo. The photo, it shows a man and he seems that he has problems or something. He's thinking, right, when you are in a situation like this, we call it what? Adversity. So adversity is a noun, and it means when somebody is in a difficult situation or an unlucky event or situation. So, if you are in such situation, we say you are in adversity. And some people, in spite of adversity, they are what? Cheerful. So we have the example of this lady. She was cheerful in adversity. Good. Now, look at the photo. This is horse riding. This is another photo of horse riding. And the horse is jumping over the fence. And this is another... The word here, all these three pictures, they refer to what we call equestrian. So, when we say the word equestrian, 
we are referring to horse riding, something which is related to horse riding or connected to horse riding. So it's an adjective, as you say, and the stress is on equestrian, right? And as an example, we say they plan to hold the extra, extra equestrian sports every year. Nice. Now, look at this photo. What does it show? It shows the brain and the brain cells. This is a brain cell. And we have this person who is looking at the brain cell and he is what we call a neurologist. A neurologist is a doctor who treats the diseases of the brain cells, the neurons, what we call the neurons. So he is a doctor who studies and he treats the diseases of the nerves. Right. Our next word is observe. So it's a verb and the stress in observe. So you say observe, right? Now, this word here, the word observe means to obey, to respect. For example, when you drive a car, you have to observe the rules, the traffic rules. If the light is red, you have to stop. If you don't stop, it means you don't observe the rules. Right. So here, observe means to obey a law, a rule, or a custom, or whatever. And you have the example of driving. When you are driving, you should observe speed limits. Do not go beyond the speed limits. You should also observe traffic lights and signs. If you have to turn left, turn left. If you have to turn right, turn right. In general, people must observe the law. Nobody should be an exception. Nice. Our next word is phenomenon. So, as you can see, we have phenomenon. And we focus or we stress in our pronunciation the second part, which is nom. So we say phenomenon. Right. What is a phenomenon? It is something that exists, we can see, and we can feel, we can taste, but it is something unusual or interesting. So we call it a phenomenon. An example of phenomenon is a, the example in physics, gravity. It is a natural phenomenon. When things fall to the ground, this is a phenomenon, and it is a natural phenomenon. Look at this photo. If you look at the photo, you can see two women. And these two women, one of them is a doctor, and the other is a patient. And the doctor is training her to move her arms. The same for the second photo. You have an old lady and a doctor who is training her to walk. The third photo as well, we have a lady who is training a man to move his legs. All these photos, they, the doctors are trying to do what? To rehabilitate rehabilitate the patients. Now, the word rehabilitate here means they are trying to help them what go back to the condition before. These people are sick, for example, they are trying to help them go to the sit situation before they became sick. So, it's not only when you are sick. If somebody goes to prison, and then you, have, you rehabilitate him, means you try to take him back to the situation before he went to prison. Rise. Look at the photo here. It is focused on, it shows the 
the column, the vertebral column, and it shows something in red in the vertebral. It shows there is a pain. This is pain in the in the back. Also, the, the second photo shows pain in the back. And here, if sometimes you suffer from pain, you can go to a specialist or what we call physiotherapist, and he will try to treat you by rubbing his hands on the parts which are, you know, which are painful. So we call this physiotherapy. So you have physiotherapy. So physiotherapy is the treatment of muscle stiffness, when your muscles are stiff, right? They are not relaxed, they are not. And when there is pain or there is injury in, in your muscles. So you treat it, but without medicine, you treat it only with, by rubbing and by moving the sore parts, the parts which are painful and okay. Good. Now, we move to the next word. It is self-discipline. It's a noun. And this, it means, let's give me a situation. If, for example, you have an exam, and the exam is going to be soon, and you need to prepare for the exam. But sometimes you feel lazy and you don't want to prepare for the exam. But when you force yourself to prepare for exam, we call this self-discipline. So here, it is making yourself do things you know you should do, even when you do not want to do them. So this is self-discipline. Good. Our next word is virtue. It's a noun. And it has to do with morals, with the moral quality in people, like being honest, like uh, uh, being patient. So we call it a virtue. So patience is a virtue. Being honest is a virtue. Not telling lies is a virtue. So these are examples of the word virtue. Right. Then. We move to the next word. It is interpersonal, and it's an adjective. So you have interpersonal. So you, you stress the word interpersonal. Right. Interpersonal has to do with relationships between or among people. When we say something interpersonal, we speak of relationships among people. We can speak of interpersonal skills. If you, in the job, because you are dealing with lots of people in, your, in a job, so you have to have interpersonal skills. If you don't have interpersonal skills, you will not be a good uh, colleague. Right. Good. Look at the photo. What does it show? shows a compass. The second photo also shows a compass. The third one. And the next one, it is not a compass, but it's a navigator. And also, this is also a navigator. So all these instruments, this is also on a kind of navigator used in ships and in uh, planes. So all these photographs, illustrate or show the meaning of the verb navigate. And as a definition for the verb, it means travel on a set route, especially carefully or with difficulty. You have the example here of sailors who use special equipment to help them navigate. And now let's move to the next word. The word is personal trainer. As you can see, the word is made up of two words, personal and trainer. So what is a personal trainer? He is a person whose job is to help you to become stronger and fitter and healthier. How does he do this? He 
decide which exercises you should do and he shows you how to do them. So he is your personal trainer. Some people, they have their personal trainer and especially wealthy people, they have their own personal trainer. Good. Now, let's see the last word here, which is stamina. So the word is pronounced stamina. Right. Stamina is the situation when you do something which is very difficult and very long, it takes a long time, and when you do it, we say that you have the physical and the mental strength. So stamina is the physical and the mental strength you have when you do something which is very difficult and it takes a long time. So this is stamina. As an example, the triathlon is a great test of stamina. Because in a triathlon, you have to run, to swim, and to ride a bike. So it needs stamina. Right. Now that we have presented the vocabulary items, we are going to move to some practice exercises. So let's start. So you have the words adversity, observe, able-bodied, interpersonal, rehabilitate, equestrian. Now, it is hard for the to understand the difficulties of the disabled. So we have here the disabled as opposed to what? It is hard for the able-bodied. So able-bodied people cannot understand the difficulties of the disabled. The second sentence says, the road to happiness is paved with. It's not easy to become happy. There are a lot of bad situations, what we call adversity. So the road to happiness is paved with adversity. The third sentence, the store sells everything like boots and saddles. So you have boots and saddles and the word is equestrian. Anything that is needed by horse riders and horse riding. So it is equestrian. Right, now, look at the next sentence. The old people in the village still the local traditions. And the word is observe. As we have seen before, observe means to respect, to obey. Right, so these people here, they observe the tradition, the local ones. And now let's move to the next sentence. Let's read the sentence. The sentence says, physiotherapy, victims of accidents. So what does physiotherapy do to victims of accidents? So it rehabilitates victims of accidents. Good. The next sentence says, if you work as a part of a team, you will develop skills. What kind of skills? It is interpersonal skills. Good. Now in the following exercise, you have to choose the correct word to complete the sentence. Let's read the sentence. Sailors use special equipment to help them. You have four choices. Observe, navigate, rehabilitate, employ. And of course, the answer is navigate. Sentence number two. A lot of wealthy people have their own personal and, of course, it is trainer. Nice. Now we'll see some setbook questions. The first question is, what are the Paralympics, a definition of the Paralympics. So, they are what? They are sporting events or competitions which are held among athletes with disabilities. It's for the disabled, not for the other athletes. The second question is, what sporting facilities are there for disabled in Kuwait? 
right? And for the table in Kuwait, they have a sports club which is specifically for them. They also have a track and a field stadium which is equipped with a digital screen and a physiotherapy section. Right. Our last question is, what view do the Paralympics challenge? So, the Paralympics challenge the view or the idea that only the able but it can achieve high levels of performance in sports. And now we have come to a close for today's lesson. We have presented the new vocabulary items and we have practiced them and we have answered also some of the set book questions. Now, thank you very much for your attention and see you in another lesson. Okay.